That flight you were gonna take today? Well, it's uh, it's kind of delayed. I uh, forgot to plug the plane in overnight. Hey, you, it's me, Curtis P. It's time for some coffee. We've been hearing more and more about electric vehicles taking over the roads around the globe, but what about the air? Some big news this past week as Airbus, Rolls-Royce, and Siemens have all teamed up to convert a large passenger plane to electric engines. Now, currently they're working on replacing one of the four large engines on the aircraft with a two megawatt electric powered fan, which will help provide the plane's thrust. The system is called the E-Fan X technology, and it uses an electric fan mounted on the wing like a traditional jet engine, but it's powered by a gas turbine mounted inside of the plane. Now, currently this is one of the biggest issues with electric planes at this time is there's just no efficient way to actually store enough electricity to run the motors on the plane. But the companies involved are pushing forward with the research of the motor technology in hopes that at some point in the near future, battery tech will quickly catch up. And some more news in the electric car space as Jeep has made a rather interesting announcement as their company is working on a plug-in hybrid version of the Jeep Wrangler for 2020. The typically fuel inefficient vehicle would be a huge step forward for the brand and and it's a big step forward for the electric vehicle industry. Personally for myself, as a current Jeep Wrangler owner, I love the vehicle, but it is horrible for its fuel economy. And an electric off-road vehicle just doesn't seem like a logical choice, but hey, if the market's demanding it, that's awesome. So overall, it's a pretty great sign that even Jeep is thinking about producing an electric vehicle because I love the Jeep, but it is not fuel efficient. So if they're thinking, hey, electric vehicles, they're here to stay, we should probably make one. That's a good sign for the industry as a whole. But hey, that's just my opinion on electric vehicles. What do you think? Are you interested in electric vehicles? Do you think they're good or bad? Let me know, comment section down below. Into the quick news for today, as Instagram could be getting very close to adding a new regram button to your photo feed. The feature is something many users have been asking for for years, and currently there's no elegant way to reshare someone's photo within your own feed to your followers. There are some third-party applications that can do it, but there's really no proper way of tracking where your photos are being shared. Beyond that, Instagram is also working on adding GIFs into their story creation process, and a brand new way to save your stories for later. No longer will your stories disappear entirely after 24 hours. They still won't be publicly available, but you as the publisher will be able to look back at them in any time you wish. And YouTube not wanting to be left out here is also working on a brand new update that could include a story-like feature. The site has announced they're working on bringing the community tab to more channels, as long as the channel has over 10,000 subscribers. And part of this brand new community tab is the feature called Reels. Think of it like the YouTube version of Story here. Channels can post short videos to their reels for fans to watch. YouTube's overall hope with this is that it'll help people publish more videos without going through the hassle of actually editing and uploading. And you'll even be able to have multiple different reels. So if you want to have a reel for studio content, then one for at home, and maybe another one for your vacation, you can. And reels will also not expire like stories on other platforms. And last with the quick news, the Twitter employee responsible for deactivating Trump's Twitter account earlier this month has come forward. A man by the name of Vietjar got in contact with TechCrunch to provide them with an interview all about the event. The German citizen was working as a contractor for Twitter at its San Francisco headquarters at the time when this entire thing went down. The man calls the entire event a mistake and he didn't actually think the account would get deactivated like it did. Overall, it's a pretty interesting interview. Link to it in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Well, Google has announced a small update to their Google Home device today. Google Home now has the ability to handle two commands at the same time if asked. So if you want to ask Google to turn on your TV and what the weather is like outside, the assistant can do both of those at the same time. Keeping in mind though, the assistant can't handle three commands. It's only limited to one or two. This follows Amazon rolling out a somewhat similar feature earlier this month called Routines, which allows you to ask Alexa to perform a number of tasks based off of one key word. But continuing with the discussion about Google Assistant here, looks like Google could be thinking about merging the Nest brand with the Google Home brand. Google bought Nest back in 2015, but they've kept the two separate. But that could soon change as rumors state that Nest items could be rebranded as the Google Home thermostat or the Google Cam. Overall, it would make a lot of sense as Google is looking to take on the likes of Amazon Home right now with their very similar products. And last for today, it's been a crazy week for Bitcoin as the cryptocurrency has reached an all-time high, while also showing it still might not be the safest investment in the long run. On Wednesday, Bitcoin reached the all-time high of $11,000 per coin. 
but then yesterday it dropped again to 9,000. That's a drop of one-fifth its valuation in just 24 hours. But this isn't stopping the world stock exchanges from taking a closer look at the hot new cryptocurrency. The Nasdaq Stock Exchange has already announced that they're planning on launching futures contracts for Bitcoin in the new year. And many banks are also looking into the viability of using the blockchain to help secure more of their finances in the near future. Well, if you enjoyed today's show, make sure you click on that subscribe button and of course, join the notification squad so you can stay up to date on all of the latest videos I post throughout the week. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Links to all of that are in the description down below or on my website at curtisparity.ca. Well, until Monday, everybody, I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.